Good afternoon, everybody. So today we will start the second part of our course. So far, we have treated four topics uh, in the curriculum of this course, where the goal was to cover the introductory aspect of the course. So we saw an introduction to a digital business. We distinguished it from e-commerce, and we defined various uh, terminologies that are used mm -hmm in digital uh, business. We also looked at environment that digital enterprises are facing. We saw the micro environment as well as macro environment. We also uh, looked at various digital business infrastructure that companies today are using. And we saw different op uh, various opportunities that co companies today uh, can use as far as technologies are concerned. So now we will start the second part of it, of the course, and that is strategy and applications. So today we will begin one aspect of uh, strategy and applications, and that is uh, digital business uh, strategy. Uh, in the uh, coming lectures, we will see st specific strategies for specific uh, functional areas uh, of a, di uh, of a digital uh, business. My point of departure today is the question, why the failure rate among online businesses is so high? At some point when we were treating the introduction of this course, I mentioned if we are to believe the statistics, today the failure rate of uh, online businesses, uh, startups, is about 90%, which means out of every uh, 10 startups, only one of them is a success story. So the, for every 10 uh, startup uh, online businesses, there are only one that has uh, the possibility of surviving. So what is the problem? And these are stories that we see every now and then in, in, in the media. that. The internet has uh, created a lot of opportunities for, for us to, to start businesses, but also we have to be aware of the fact that it's challenging. And as these uh, facts by point, it's very difficult for online businesses to, to, to survive. So w what are the problems? Can somebody suggest uh, some of the factors that uh, uh, lead to f uh, such a high failure rate of on on online uh, business startups? Competition, Competition yeah, sure. Design. Design, yeah, sure. Anything else? However, we also know that there are so many uh, businesses that were established at, at least in the last uh, 20 years that have been quite uh, successful. And these are just, of course, some of these were uh, established uh, earlier. But uh, the point is that uh, despite the high failure rate of businesses, we also know that there are some success stories out there. So what makes that some businesses are successful and others are failure? And this is. The intriguing question that uh, you and I should uh, ask ourselves, why some uh, companies are successful and others are failure? And scholars that are, uh, are, are involved in strategy research, they are concerned, among other things, with this question, that why some companies are successful and others are not. And this happens even in the same industry or in the same uh, environment, or in the same country. You have uh, certain businesses that are more successful uh, than others. And besides uh, the question why uh, some are successful and others are not, sometimes a business could be a success story for some time and suddenly it vanishes from the market. These are some of the uh, examples. You, you all remember Nokia? It was a dominant force during its time. It's still there, but not as powerful as it used to be. During the, uh, its time, everybody wanted to have a, a Nokia. So what went wrong? And the story of Nokia is common to many other companies. Likewise, 
BlackBerry, uh, produced by Research in Motion. During its time, it was the powerful smart, uh, smartphone uh, you could find in the market. But when uh, iPhone came in 2006 and later uh, Samsung, and of course the, the, all the Android devices that uh, followed after, gradually BlackBerry disappeared. It's still there and they're trying to rejuvenate, but it's not as powerful as it used to be. So why is it that some companies manage to maintain their performance for a long period of time and others are not? So this is uh, one of the questions that uh, well, we should be, we are, will try to answer uh, in this qu uh, class. And this is the question that most uh, strategy researchers are trying to answer in, in their research. There are many ways that we, we, we can learn from either failures or success that uh, those two questions, that why some companies are successful, others are not, why some companies manage to, to maintain their success and others do not. One of the approaches is to learn from the successful uh, cases. That we look at uh, successful people, we look at successful companies and try to learn from them. Now, what is the problem with this approach? You recognize that guy? Donald Trump is one of the uh, very successful businessmen uh, in the world. And he has written a book, How to Get Rich. There's another book, uh, In Search of Excellence. Th th that was a uh, research of uh, numerous successful companies. I think it was published in 1980s, where they reviewed various successful companies and try uh, to draw a kind of framework that what you should do in, be, in order to be uh, successful. And there are always we get ad advice from successful people. Uh, Steve Jobs will tell you something, if you want to be successful, you have to do this. Probably uh, Mark Zuckerberg will also tell you something, what it takes to be successful. So always you can learn something from successful people. So what is the problem with learning from successful people? They are already successful. Mm -hmm. And if they are already successful, yeah, sure, uh, I like that approach. That's easy to talk about it. Uh -huh. uh, another problem? E exactly, exactly. That, that's another factor. An another factor? Another reason why it may not be uh, very useful to learn from the successful people. So here are some of the uh, reasons why it may not be very smart to, to learn from successful people and one of the factors as you said. But first of all, sometimes their success may, might be completely a random outcome. That do you believe in luck that success uh, is a combination of factors among, th among them is luck. Sometimes you could be just lucky. Do you believe in that? Things happen randomly. So we say one of the problem is sometimes these companies are successful, but actually their success is purely a random outcome. It's just by chance, which means you cannot learn much from these companies if their success is just by chance. That they were at the right time, at the right place, and things happen. But another problem is industry and market conditions may be completely different. So probably the, the kind of industry that uh, Facebook is operating might be completely different from yours, which means the lessons that you may learn from Facebook may not necessarily be applicable to your case. Another problem is success may come from idiosyncratic factors. It, that, that means success may come from unique factors that are tied to that uh, enterprise. It may be historical reasons. It may be uh, special connections that the company has. It may be unique resources that the company has, which means if those factors are not applicable to your situation, you will not be successful. But another problem is sampling bias. 
And that is probably the kind of things that uh, a successful company would advise you, or a successful person would advise you. They have been tried by a lot of other people that have failed. Probably a lot of people have tried the same uh, things and it didn't work. And this is, so these are some of the uh, problems of learning from the successful people. Now, what are we trying to do in this course? In this course, we will not just learn from successful people or successful enterprises. We have some business cases where we will try to learn from uh, these successful cases or from these business cases, but also we will try to use established principles from economics and uh, strategy that uh, these are principles that have been established through research, through uh, large number of observations, and they are a sort of guidelines on what you should do that can help you attain success. So it's not uh, principles that are based on one uh, case or two, but these are established principles based on a large number of cases. So we have some sort of confidence when we are using these principles uh, to, to define uh, what we should do and what we should not, uh, we should not do. And this is the, uh, the type of uh, approach that we will use in this class. And it's the type of approach uh, most uh, uh, causes or at least uh, academicians would uh, approach when it comes to uh, advising uh, people on what they should uh, do. So uh, with this approach, we will learn not only how to do business online, but the focus will be how to do business differently online. Because as we saw in the uh, introductory, uh, introductory part of this course, that the marketplace is overcrowded. You will always face competition, which means in order to stay on top of your game, you have to differentiate yourself from the competition. And this is what we are uh, trying to, to learn in this, uh, in this class, that we will try uh, to discuss the various principles that eventually uh, will help you to distinguish your, your business from uh, competition. And to do that, we will learn what we call a digital business strategy. That is uh, a strategy that is created uh, specifically for a digital uh, business. Now, what is strategy? If you don't read uh, what I have, uh, can somebody try to define what a strategy? I guess at, at some point you, you have taken a course in strategy or, or summarize that definition in, in a few words. What, what would you say about uh, strategy? What, what is a strategy? how to position yourself, yes. And that's one aspect of strategy. It's a long-term plan. Long plan, exactly. Another aspect of strategy. Well, so if we have to talk about it co com comprehensively, this is what Johnson and his colleague, uh, uh, this is how they define the strategy. Uh, I will break down this definition into various uh, uh, components, and those will include uh, the two aspects you, you have just mentioned. Strategy defines the direction and scope of an organization over the long term, which achieves advantage for the organization through its configuration of resources within a changing environment to meet the needs of markets and to fulfill stakeholder expectations. Now, if you look at this de definition and break it into smaller components or aspects, the first thing that strategy tries to answer is direction. Where is the business trying to get in the long term? So which direction do you want your business to head? Another aspect is which markets should business compete, and in what kind of activities are involved in such markets? And that is markets and scope. So you have to de 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 define, or you have to decide which markets uh, you, your business uh, will compete, 
and the scope, which kind of activities will you conduct in that uh, market? And now you have to define the uh, competitive advantage, that how can the business perform better than the competition in those markets? So you are aware of the fact that you will operate in a market where there will be competitors, and then you need to define how you will be able to outcompete your, uh, your rivals or your competitors. But you need also to define resources that you need uh, uh, to, to, to be able uh, to compete in that uh, market. So you need to define the various skills, assets, finance, uh, financial resources, relationships, technical uh, uh, competence, facilities, uh, all these assets that you, you need in order to compete in a particular uh, market. And then you need to consider the environmental factors. We, we, we discussed about microenvironment and macroenvironment of a business as factors that influence uh, or uh, affect your business, either directly or indirectly. So you, you need to consider which factors that can affect your, your, your business. And lastly, you need to consider the interest of your uh, stakeholders. So these are people that, uh, people, groups that uh, uh, have an impact on your, uh, on your business. And in this case, uh, you have to think about the owners of your, your, your business. What are the expectations? When you have a small uh, business, you could be, the owner could be yourself. But as the business grows, uh, most likely people will invest their financial resources in your company and you need to, know, uh, to, to take care of their uh, expectations. So these are the aspects that uh, define uh, a strategy. And those are the kind of uh, things that we will try to discuss one uh, after another, like how to, to, to define this. So based on this, as I said, that we are trying to learn from established uh, uh, principles, this provides you with a framework on how to compete uh, in, a, in a market. So rather than following uh, a, an advice of uh, an individual who t tells you that in order to be successful, you have to be passionate, that's true, but it's not enough. To be passionate, there are a lot of people that are passionate about what they are doing, and they are not successful. We know this. Or people tell you you have to work hard. We know that. If you, if you work hard, there will be uh, fruits for that, but working hard itself is not sufficient uh, uh, to, to be successful because in the marketplace, your competitors also are working hard. So we need to have a kind of framework that will clearly tell us what we should do uh, in order to stay competitive in the marketplace. And this is the approach we are trying to, to, to follow in this class. Now, strategy can be defined at uh, different levels of uh, an organization. At the top level, you could have a, a, a corporate strategy. I, I will discuss each one of these uh, uh, in detail. And also, you have a business unit strategy, and that it will be uh, at a, a middle level uh, uh, organization management. And uh, at the bottom, you have the operational uh, strategy. So. As the, the name suggests, corporate strategy is concerned with the overall pur pur purpose and scope of, uh, of the business. So the corporate strategy is responsible for defining the overall dire direction of uh, the organization, defining the, the long-term uh, objectives uh, of the organization, and the approach to, to achieve these uh, long-term uh, uh, objectives and to meet stakeholder expect expectations. And then next to it, you have a, a business uh, unit or business uh, uh, level strategy where this is concerned with the markets that the, the, the organization or the enterprise is operating. So it is at this level where decisions such as which markets to, to, to operate or which markets to compete, which products to introduce in the market are done. And then at the bottom level, you have operational strategy. And this is involved with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the various uh, activities or 
functional uh, activities uh, in a day-to-day -day, uh, basis that are conducted to support the business strategy and the corporate uh, strategy. So the question is, we are now in a new economy. We, we are talking about digital uh, businesses. This framework has been there for historically. So even when uh, people were uh, much concerned about digital business, we, we already had this framework. So we are used to this. And probably some of you who have had a cause in strategy have been introduced in this before. So the question is, where do we fit digital business strategy? Like in this framework. First of all, we have to be clear about what a digital business strategy is. And this is what we say, an organizational strategy formulated and executed by leveraging digital resources to create differential uh, value. So while an overall strategy of an uh, organization is concerned with uh, defining objectives, deciding which approaches to, to, to achieve those objectives, uh, considering the various environmental factors, where, which markets uh, to operate, which uh, expectations of the stakeholders to, to meet. Digital business strategy is much more specific uh, for a digital enterprise. And that is, it's a, a, a strategy that is uh, formulated and takes advantage of the uh, digital uh, resources or technologies that uh, we, we have uh, today in order to create value and differentiate an organization from competitors. When it comes to where uh, a digital business strategy uh, fits in, studies indicate that in most organizations, at least uh, the last uh, 10, 15 years, digital uh, business strategy has been part of a functional level strategy that is at the bottom of the organizational. So it's something that usually evolves within different functional areas within a, an organization. So it's very uh, typical that accounting department would have their own approach, uh, supply chain or procurement uh, functional area would have uh, a different approach, production, manufacturing. So this has been so uh, historically. However, there have been significant changes that we, we, we recognize that uh, these days things are changing. There are more and more uh, organizations, uh, uh, as we will see, are trying to make it uh, as part of the corporate strategy. That mm -hmm. is, they are taking it to the uh, top level of the uh, strategy de development. And the problem is, if digital business strategy is not included at the top level, that is, is uh, taken as an, an aspect within functional areas, the challenge is it's very easy to, to ignore uh, the, business, uh, the, the digital business strategy because uh, this appears to be uh, an aspect of individual functional areas, and it's very easy uh, for silos, that is fragmentation of the organization to occur because different functional areas may have different uh, approaches uh, to digital business uh, strategy. So we see increasingly most of the successful uh, uh, digital uh, businesses uh, today, they are treating it uh, as a part of a corporate strategy. And here are some of the uh, uh, implications for not including uh, a digital business strategy as part, uh, part of the corporate strategy. And one of them is uh, missed opportunities. That uh, today we, 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 we know that most of the successful companies are in one way or another are using digital technologies, uh, basing their uh, competitive advantage, among other things, on technologies, which means if you do not have a, a clear and effective uh, digital business strategy, it's very easy to miss uh, uh, business uh, opportunities, either for failure to, to identify uh, opportunities or for being able to provide substandard or at least to provide uh, a service level that is below expectations of your uh, consumers. Because we know today uh, customers 
have very high expectations. They are expecting you to be uh, digitalized in, in a way. Another problem is you can easily drift to a, in, a, in a wrong direction. If uh, you, you have a, a, a digital business strategy that is not clearly uh, defined, then it's very easy for your uh, organization to get into a wrong uh, direction. And then we have limited integration of, uh, of the organization that if you have uh, a weak digital business strategy that is defined at the bottom level of the organization in different functional areas, it's very easy to create uh, silos that uh, disintegration among the functional areas within an organization. And then you have a problem of uh, resource uh, wastage because if every department has its own uh, stra uh, strategy, then it's likely that there might be duplication of resources, that the same thing uh, that could be done for the entire organization might be done repeatedly in, in, different, uh, organization, uh, in different functional areas. And this leads to uh, wastage of resources. So to, to avoid uh, these problems, as I said, any, a digital business strategy has to be at the top level. Uh, of the organization, that is the corporate strategy. That it has to be an aspect of the entire organization. So if you're uh, running a digital enterprise, then you have to have it in your mind that your strategy, your digital business strategy, has to be uh, an aspect of an entire organizational uh, strategy, not individual functional uh, areas within an, an organization. And this is uh, quite uh, logical because we expect that a digital business strategy will support not only the individual functional areas, but the business uh, strategy as well as the corporate strategy. So it has to be something that has an overall impact uh, in, in an organization. And that is because given the environment uh, we have today where things are changing so fast, the technology uh, is changing so fast, it means you, you need to have a strategy that enables you to respond fast uh, to the changes that are happening in your environment. And that is possible if you have a, a, a strategy that takes care of uh, overall uh, activities of a, a, an organization. So if we have to think of a digital business uh, strategy as part of a corporate strategy, and then this is the structure that your enterprise strategy has to follow, that you have a corporate strategy at the top. And be given the kind of environment, business environment we are facing today, you have a digital business strategy, which not only is influenced by corporate uh, strategy, but also it influences the corporate strategy. So the entire direction or the direction of your entire business has to be defined to a large extent by the digital business strategy. As long as you have decided to uh, conduct a digital uh, uh, business. So it plays a central role in today's uh, businesses. Oh, sorry. So at the top you have corporate strategy, and then you expect it to have digital strategy, and at the bottom, then the functional or operational uh, strategies uh, will follow. And these are uh, topics that will come out when we discuss strategies for different functional areas of an organization. Now, one important aspect uh, of digital technologies or digital uh, business str strategy uh, specifically is that they create 
new uh, digital channel strategy for organizations. That we, we know that digital uh, technologies today have led to new channels for, for enterprises to reach uh, the markets. And because of that, we need to have strategies that can accommodate all these new channels that technology has provided to, uh, to organization. And when we say uh, digital channels, this is a, a general term or generic term that includes all the digital uh, platforms and technologies that uh, uh, today organizations uh, have. So we're talking about uh, multi-channel uh, strategy that organizations that are using different channels to, to reach uh, their customers. We are talking about mobile commerce strategy for organizations that are uh, using uh, mobile commerce as a way of uh, interacting with their customers. Social media, social uh, uh, customer relationship management, supply chain and enterprise resource planning, e-procurement strategy. So these are the various channels that digital technologies today have created and because of that we need to respond with appropriate strategy for each of these channels that we are, uh, we are facing today. The fact is, as long as uh, technology, and in this case, digital technology provides us with uh, uh, a lot of opportunities, it implies that there will, at any point in time, there will be a lot of alternatives at your disposal, that there will be a lot of options that you could take uh, for, your, for your business, be it uh, uh, channels that you can, you can uh, adapt for your, for, for your business, or sometimes even products. So the bottom line is we have so much opportunities today, given the, uh, the various advantages that uh, digital technologies are uh, presenting to organizations. So it's very important that to say it's uh, priorities, that you, you need to dis, uh, look at the alternatives that are available for your organization and make choice. So it's very important that we, we make uh, choices and these are issues that we will discuss as we move along with, uh, with this topic. So it is very uh, important that you decide the alternative causes of actions that you, you can take and make your uh, choices based on the priorities. Of course, uh, as usual, you, you select what is best for, for your uh, organization. So still, although we have this uh, multiple channels that we, we can consider, and I've said you have to, uh, to, to, to make a choice or prioritize which channels that you, you, uh, you want to, to select. One fact that we cannot ignore is the fact that a multi-channel uh, approach is very common today. If you have to reach your customers, you will be, in one way or another, forced to interact with different channels. Having one channel will not be enough because we know today's customers are all over the place, are exposed to different technologies, have different devices, they are available in different places. So if you have to reach those customers, you need to have a, a multi-channel uh, 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 approach. And in this case, you need to have a multi-channel uh, uh, strategy. And that is a strategy w which defines how different marketing and supply chain channels should integrate and support each other. So at some point, you may have, say, online channels for reaching your customers, but also you may have uh, physical channels that you still use uh, physical distribution agents. So you need to define a, a strategy that can accommodate both these uh, channels. As we will see later, that sometimes there could be a conflict between uh, online channels and the use of uh, physical uh, channels. So the most important uh, uh, point that you have to, to note is uh, you need to create a, ch uh, a strategy that can accommodate different channels that your organization will be managing or will be using for, for that case. And what, is, what are the characteristics of a multi-channel uh, digital business strategy? Typically, this is characterized by first specific objectives that 
And this is uh, very I intuitive that if you are about to set for a journey, you need to define where you want to go. So you need to set objective. Where each time you want to create uh, a digital business strategy, you need to have objectives because that's what defines uh, what you are, uh, you are thriving for. Your efforts, your activities will be directed towards the objective. So you need to set uh, objectives. And then second, this strategy will define how you should communicate the, the benefits of using the, the, the different channels because you will be uh, confronting different uh, customers, most likely for this, uh, for different channels. So you need to have a, a, stra a strategy that clearly communicates the different, uh, the, the, the advantages of different uh, channels that you will uh, use. And then you have to prioritize uh, audiences or partners targeted for each channel uh, adoption. So you need to, to define who are the customers and which channels are appropriate uh, for them and how you should uh, save those uh, companies. And then you need to prioritize products. Not, uh, not every product would be suitable, say, for online uh, delivery. And likewise, not every product will be suitable for uh, physical uh, distribution, which means if you're using mult, uh, multiple channels, you need to define which products will be channeled by which uh, channel. And then another important aspect is uh, your channel has to emphasize, uh, your strategy has to emphasize, emphasize how does it differentiate you from other competitors. So it's not just an issue of using uh, multiple uh, channels, but the use of multiple channels should create uh, a competitive advantage or should give you a competitive edge uh, against your, your, your uh, competitors which means you have to specify clearly why the use of multiple channels will distinguish you from uh, your competitors. And then you need to adopt what we call right uh, channeling, and that is trying to identify and reach the right customer, use right uh, channel for the customer, as I have said, with the right message or offering, that is value proposition, as we have talked about it uh, uh, earlier, and delivering it uh, at the right time. And finally, your strat strategy has to, to, to define how your organization uh, gains value or creates value internally by using digital technologies, or in this case, electronic uh, networks, for example. So how do we create a strategy? So we, we have been discussing what a strategy is, uh, what it should include, and why do we need it. In this part uh, uh, of the lecture, we will start looking at the process for creating uh, uh, a strategy. So before you uh, create a strategy for your, for your business, and that is before you uh, define your objectives and decide the approach to reaching those ob objectives, considering environmental factors, deciding which markets to compete. You need first to decide which approach will you follow uh, in developing this uh, strategy. And the importance of this, uh, 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 of defining the approach uh, to strategy de uh, development is First, it will help you to include all the key aspects or activities that has to be, uh, have to be included uh, in a strategy. And secondly, it will help you to ensure that your strategy is part of a continuous improvement. So this framework, and that is uh, the model for developing a strategy, will help you to point out all the different aspects that your business strategy has to, to include. And it's very important to consider this because uh, for some of you, if you will be interested in starting a, a business uh, in the future, at some point you will be required to produce a business plan. And as part of your business plan, you will have to include your business strategy. So there are 
elements that you are expected to be addressed in your business uh, plan. And that is, investors will always uh, look for certain aspects of, be, of your business. You could have a, a, a fan fantastic business idea, but if the plan or the strategy doesn't appeal to the investors, people can hardly invest their money uh, in your business because no one likes to invest uh, the, their resources into a risky business. So these frameworks help you to identify the key elements that your strategy should always uh, uh, include. Now, there are various uh, models that you can follow. That is, there are various frameworks that explain how you should go about when you create your, your, your strategy. And these are some of, the, uh, of these uh, models. So for instance, uh, Jalas and his colleague are saying, in order to create a strategy, you need first to start with uh, sort analysis, uh, that is uh, analysis of strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of an organization. Uh, I, I will discuss this in uh, the sort analysis later. But it, what basically it says is that you need to uh, assess the, the various uh, strengths that your organization has, the various weaknesses you have, uh, the various opportunities and threats that you are facing. And then you need to state mission and objectives that before, uh, uh, after defining, after doing some sort of analysis, you have to define your mission and what is it you want to accomplish and you have to set objectives. And then you formulate the strategy and then you, you implement the strategy. So this is one approach. And then you have Johnson and his colleague, they are proposing a, another approach that if you want to create a strategy, you need to start with uh, strategic analysis. Uh, I defined this term uh, when we uh, treated macro environment factors. Uh, that is uh, assessment of various uh, internal resources, micro and macro environmental factors in order to uh, decide how you can position yourself. So. Uh, Johnson and his colleague are uh, proposing that you need to start with strategic analysis and then you need to make strategic choice that you have to come up with uh, different uh, alternatives uh, that you can you can follow and then you select one uh, alternative then you implement the strategy as you can see this is less detailed than this and then you have another uh, approach that you start with situation review goal setting and corporate objectives, and then strategy formulation, and then resource allocation and implementation. Pretty much uh, like the first one. And then you have this one, situation analysis, objective setting, strategy, tactics, and control. So there are so many other frameworks that uh, are providing guidance on how we should go about when it comes to defining a strategy. So which one do we follow? You have a suggestion? So the approach we will take in this class is a generic uh, strategic process model. That is, we will collect common elements in all these uh, frameworks and create one framework that we can follow. If you look at all these uh, frameworks, they have a lot of things uh, in common. So we will first uh, point out uh, factors or, or things that are common to all the frameworks and develop one generic approach. And with that, first we, we, you notice that almost in all these frameworks, uh, they talk about internal and external environmental scanning or analysis that you need to assess the internal environment of your organization as well as external environment uh, organization. And also, they all, in one way or another, suggest that you need to have vision and objectives, that you need to decide where you want to be, set goals, targets, objectives, uh, that they, these are things that you want to, to, to achieve. And then they suggest that you need to have a strategy of op uh, option generation or 
you have now to create the strategy based on your uh, internal and external environmental scanning and your vision and objectives. And then after creating the uh, strategy, you have to implement. And lastly, you have to control. And control is very important because after implementation of the strategy, we want to see whether the strategy works as we intended it. So is it working as intended or not? And is it operating as, is it producing the results that we wanted? So these are the stages that uh, we, we, we will follow. But generally, when it comes to e-commerce strategy, there are key three aspects that you always have to, 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 to include. And that is, one is, where will your business compete? Which market are you planning to, uh, to, to operate? And second is, what type of value will it compete or will it compete with? Or what value are you creating? And how should the organization be to designed to deliver that value? So these are key aspects that, in a way, your strategy has to address. And it's 3 uh, o'clock, so we take a break and we will continue after.